so you know us girls. Um, but welcome, welcome this morning. I only have a couple of announcements. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, team. You know, some of the team. And um, we are so blessed this morning to have uh, Pastor Megan Jurgens come and share the word of God with us. Megan and her husband pastor a great church in Casino, another Inc. church. And so we feel really thrilled to have you with us, Megs. Come on up, darling, and let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for a great woman. We thank you, Father, for... Father, for a woman who has walked the walk and doesn't just talk the talk, but God, who really yields her knee to your authority in her life, the call of God on her life, and Father, is committed to the message and the mission of the gospel. Father, take the words that she speaks now, Lord, would you translate them to a language that each one of us would understand. And God, through her words, I pray, Holy Spirit, that we would learn more of you, fall more in love with you, God and encounter you this morning in a very real way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Oh, I can't start the morning in tears, can we? That was a lovely prayer. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, good morning, Arise Church. You guys are a great-looking bunch. It's okay to smile. It's okay to laugh. It's an interactive church. It's a live church. I liked that. It's a live church. And uh, Paul and I feel a little, oh, quite connected to this church because when it first started at um, GSAC, we came over, I think every second weekend maybe, and we set up in the GSAC building and, and just planted that seed that Jackie and Alan have come in and watered and cultivated and, and grown to what you have today. And I have no doubt that it's going to continue to grow. It's an exciting place. I really apologise for being late. The person speaking should not walk in that late. I really am sorry. But this morning, no, you shouldn't say but. This morning, however, anything that could go wrong, it, it went wrong. We got a red light on Warella Road on a Sunday morning. Like, we even came the fast way. I printed out my notes and then the printer didn't have paper and it's downstairs by the time I got downstairs. Anyway, I'm here and I'm really, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, it's always a privilege to be asked to speak in another, in another person's church and the platform, we don't just give that away, do we, Jackie? <laughs> And uh, it's even more exciting when you're invited back, because I was here 10 months ago, and it's so exciting to be invited back. And uh, whatever reason you're here this morning, whether you were dragged here by your mum and dad, whether you were dragged here by your husband or wife or grandparent, or however you got here this morning isn't important. What is important is that you're here. And I'm a firm believer in that God doesn't do things by chance. You are here for an ordained purpose. God has brought you here for a reason. And I can say now, it's not because I'm a fantastic speaker. I'm not incredible, but God is. And God knows each and every one of us, so personally and individually. Amen? And so what someone might get, and it might not be something I say, God just might drop something into your spirit, and it might have nothing to do with what I'm saying, but you've put yourself in a place where God, you've taken the time to stop, and God can speak to you. So can I encourage you this morning to lean in, to get excited. We serve a living God. You guys have been talking about the Holy Spirit. How exciting is that? I find it very difficult to talk about the Holy Spirit in that it, it encompasses so much. And uh, I did listen to the last two messages that Alan preached to sort of know where you guys are flowing with that. But how exciting about the Holy Spirit. I'm by no means a motivational speaker, but God wants us to be motivated. And he wants us to be motivated so that we can move from where we are now to where we're, where we're going. The church isn't here to nurse our wounds. We come in wounded and we can come in broken. But God meets us here. And there's a season of healing and then there's a time to move on. We have a gentleman in our church, uh, Troy Freeburn, some of you may know, and uh, he's a lovely guru man in our community, and he spoke last week, and Jackie mentioned this morning, God is good, and that was his message last week, that God is good, and I don't know how many times he said it, Joan, but uh, he said it an awful lot, because we probably needed to hear it, that God is good, and the other thing that Troy always tells us is, God, please don't let me leave here the way I came. 
And he says that every, every time he preaches. And it's such a, whenever he says it, it's almost like you're hearing it new <laughs> again. God, when we come into this, this place of, um, we've set aside this place to meet with him, God, don't let me go out of these doors the same way that I walked in. It's bad when you get old and you've got to keep putting these things on and off, on and off. But hey... I'm excited this morning that God is building his church. I want to give you some casino news. Is that okay? Casino news is exciting. When I was here last time, we were talk- I was talking about, we'd had the floods, which, you know, I don't have to talk to you guys what the floods was. It was horrendous. It was, it was not a great time for many, many, many people. And um, I was sharing how Paul got, is very involved with global care and he was going out helping everywhere everywhere and the amount of people he met and the amount of people that he helped it was just a very intense time (laughs) in a lot of people's worlds and our church was flooded and we only had probably I don't know I think Paul said 30 centimeters of water through our building but where we are in casino it does not flood so we weren't even worried about it and and it wasn't until a couple of days later someone said how's the church and we're like I don't know it should be good shouldn't it Anyway, we had water through it. And it's just enough that we had to do, we had to gut it. We had to rip out everything. We ripped out our carpet. We ripped off our walls. Um, gutted it, didn't we, Joan? <laughs> it was a mess. And then we filled it with uh, material aid and we went out about helping the community. And Paul was very instrumental in going into Korokai particularly, but in our, in our local area and um, on the outskirts of Lismore. And we had to... Um, think about where we were going to have our building, where we were going to meet. And we, we met with another church in, in Casino for a little while, which was great. But we realised it was going to be needed something a bit more long-term. So we went and uh, we rented a building, a room in, a, in our Bayimban College, which is an Aboriginal college in Casino. I didn't even know we had an, an Bayimban College. It's in, the, it's in the industrial area of Casino. It's sort of tucked away. I've never even been, hadn't been to the end of that road the whole time I'd been in casino. And we're in this building and we've got, it's quite a small area. And, but I didn't even know it was there. But you know what? That building is filling every week. Every single, I don't know how people are finding us. I will say to them, how, you know, how did you come to be here this morning? And our early, early days, like probably say six months ago, they would often say, oh, we, we saw what um, Global Care and Heartlands were doing in the community and we wanted to come and see what that was about. And uh, we could have looked at it, that Paul was out there, out there, out there, and we have a lot of people saying, what are you going to do with the church, Paul? What are you going to do with our building? And it just wasn't time to worry about our building. People had lost their homes. People you know, were living in tents and our church building didn't seem to be a priority at that time. And uh, people just found us. And uh, we've had problems like Joan has to sit in the hallway of the church. Like we, of the, as we've got a hallway and then our, building, our room's at the end. Probably about that size, Joan. Maybe a bit wider. And uh, we've sit 70 or 80 chairs in there. And we've had to take our morning tea tables out of our room to have it outside to fit chairs in. Uh, that's exciting. When, when we had um, COVID and all that kind of thing, and we, went, we sort of dwindled down to like your 35 or so, and now we're getting the, the 70 day. And, and I, I, it is not about numbers. It is not about numbers. But it is about people's lives. And if you don't have people in your church to make up numbers, then lives aren't being changed. Can, does that make sense? It's not about numbers. But it is about people. And... Uh, the people that have been coming are not from other churches. They've just either moved to the area. And um, I just want to tell a quick story about one gentleman that came with his grandson. And uh, his story is amazing. And this is for, for, I know there's a lot of teachers and people from the school. This is a great story about Christian education. Because um, this gentleman came along with his grandson. And uh, he hadn't been saved for very long. I actually believe he got saved over here at Crossroads, which is exciting. But he lives in Casino and his grandson was visiting and his grandson wanted to go to church. And I don't know exactly how he found us, but he ended up in our church. And the grandson lives, I think, in Ipswich. So he's just visiting and brought his dad to church. And his, his grandfather loves our church. He loves the people there. And he was, he just seemed, it feels like he's been there forever. 
He's that kind of gentleman. Anyway, his grandson went home and then this gentleman's been talking to us and he's a, he's a businessman and he does engineering or he does something to do with planning because he's been really instrumental with Paul and getting our building back up and running. And uh, um, the gentleman had been talking about being baptised and that was exciting and then the grandson wanted to be baptised as well but he lives up in Ipswich and his mum's not a Christian. So his mum's kind of like, I don't know what you're getting into. Um, so he rang Paul and they had a, had a chat and, and he, Paul explained, look, we're not baptising your son into a church because I think she was a bit concerned, like, now he's going to be a member of the church, do I have to give you money? You know, do we have to come all the time? And so Paul put her mind at rest about that. Anyway, probably about three weekends ago, we baptised the, the gentleman, the grandfather, and then he stayed in and he baptised his grandson. It was such a beautiful moment. And where it comes to the school part, I said to Paul, why does the grandson want to go to church so much? Like he's trying to get his mum into church. He wants to, they went to a church up there and she didn't feel comfortable there. And he said, don't worry, mum, we'll find you a church. This little guy is 11. He's 11. And I said to Paul, why, why is the grandson so into church? And he spent one year in a Christian school. One year. And then he must have been taken out and he's in another school. That one year in a Christian school, whatever teachers came around that young man's life, has given him a passion and a desire to know the things of God. One year. So for teachers and us learning assistants, it's important what we're inputting to those young guys because this guy is going to get his whole family saved. And the grandfather, he just loves us. He said he's been, like I say, really instrumental in doing some plans and stuff for our building. And often saying, look, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. You're motivating Paul because Paul is, you know, Paul can do all these other things. It's like, no, we've got Paul, we've got to do this. And this gentleman's very, very good at saying, Paul, when are we doing this? And then he'll give him a date. You need to be here because the carpet's coming or whatever. Like he's got him so organised. And he says, you don't need to thank me at all. He said, I didn't have a family and that's what you guys are to me. And that just really, it just... Yeah, it just excites my heart because he just he really believes, and, the, and we are, his family. And now he's having a, a Bible study at his home every Wednesday night and he cooks up the most amazing things because he's got family coming over. And he really, really loves it. Um, so exciting, exciting things happening in Casino. We've probably doubled in size. We had to order more communion glasses because we do the classes and we didn't have enough. So we had weeks where, you know... <laughs> 10 litres, no, no communion, sorry guys, we don't have enough classes, um, so we fix that problem. So great problems we're having in casino, without a building, because we all know church is not the building, and, uh, but God is building his church and people are finding truth and they're, and they're seeking it out. It's very exciting. Um, and and back, back then too, back like 10 months ago, we didn't... We didn't know it. We didn't know how we were going to fix the church. We didn't have a plumber. We didn't have an electrician. We didn't have. A, we had nothing. We didn't. And everyone that was doing all that was really busy. And Paul, being out there working and working, and working, he um, got alongside a Christian builder who lives down in Newcastle, who said, "Look, when all this has calmed down, when we're not, you know, doing one dry room and pods, and they were just flat out." He said, "Look, I'll come back and have a look at your church." And he's come back and he stayed for three weeks a couple of weeks ago and, and got us sort of on track and he'll be back again on Tuesday to finish it off. But had Paul not gone out and done what he felt God needed him to do, those connections wouldn't have happened. And then we, out of those people that came to our church, one's a plumber. And he's like, I can, I can do some plumbing for you. I mean, we're paying them, of course, because, you know, they're worth their wage. It's not a freebie. But they're there and they're available. We needed a tiler. We got a tiler turned up. He can only do it on weekends, so he's starting today. Um, and I, I just look back. If we had a stress 10 months ago, it would have been waste, wasted stress. <laughs> we didn't need to. Paul got about and our church got about helping others. And now all that's come around. And um, we hope to be back in our building within the next three weeks. Let's hope. So that's a little bit about... Um, casino and Alan had shared in his message last week about church splits and I think one of the funniest one I heard was about the clock someone had put a clock somewhere and the church went bananas about it we have changed everything when people go back into our building not one room is the same we've relocated our kitchen we've 
got rid of Paul's little office, took the wall out. We've made that into a children's area. Um, the toilet, men's toilets only had one toilet. They're now going to have two toilets. The ladies' room, we didn't have any disability toilet. Now we're going to have a disability toilet. Um, what else have we done? We've um, created a sound desk where there was no sound desk. It was a cupboard. Um, so we've got a multimedia area. Uh, when they went to do our stage, they pulled some planks off, some planks, that's not what they're called, but things off the floor, and it was all rotting underneath, so we had to get rid of our whole stage and we were standing on dirt in the building. So they've had to redo the whole stage. Nothing will be the same. Um, and no arguments, that's what I was getting to. No church split. No one had a fight. We had a couple of gentlemen who were kind of like, but I had a different plan, and the builder's like, too bad, I've got this plan. We had a little bit of that. But they, when the builder comes, he stays with this gentleman and they're all good. And when he comes back on Tuesday, he's staying there again. So I said to Paul, they must be okay. <laughs> but there would be no, no dramas. And we're, like, we're picking paint, we're picking tiles, we're picking toilet partition areas. <laughs> like We're picking everything. No disagreements, no fights. It's been amazing. Thank you, God. <laughs> And like I said, I had listened to um, Alan's messages over the last couple of weeks. He's a great preacher. He is a great preacher. And what oozes from him is his love for the word of God and his love of God and then his love for his church, the, the people, and then his love for the community. And in the two, little message I, two messages I listened to, I just thought, what an amazing man. And as Jackie said, there's a, a combined service here tonight. If you can get to that... I'm almost tempted to come back over. <laughs> um, they're great meetings to get to, the combined meetings, because it's all the churches coming together. And with our differences, and you now we have difference in doctrine and difference in this and that, it doesn't matter. Um, for the last time I looked, there was only one God. There's not a different God for all those different beliefs. There's one God. And that's what you're all... And you're all reaching different people. Our churches reach different people. Someone said to me one day, why do you have different churches? And I said, well, it's a bit like McDonald's and KFC. Some people like McDonald's and some people like KFC, but they're still feeding you. Like, so it doesn't really matter what church you go to. You, you go to where you fit, what you enjoy. Um, so the fact that they're all coming together, that's, that's very powerful. And talking about the Holy Spirit, like I said, to be honest with you, I find the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, sometimes a little confusing. And uh, I'm going to pause for a minute just to say, I have a very simple faith. I'm not a theologian, I haven't studied Greek or Hebrew, and I'm just not wired that way. I really wish I was, but I'm just not wired that way. I just, I read the word of God and I believe it, and if I need to change something, I try to. Very simple faith. So someone explained to me one time <laughs> about the Trinity, and this is not going to, probably not going to rock your world, I'm sorry, but it kind of rocked mine at the time, and I was, I was a lot younger, but it really helped. And they said to me, Megan, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, is like an orange. I'm like, okay. And they said, well, you have the orange, which is one orange, but then you peel it and you have the peel, and then you can squeeze it and you have the juice, and then you have the pulp. Very simple, isn't it? And then it's an orange with three separate parts. Like I said, it might not rock your world, but I thought it might help someone here this morning because it helped me. I'm not going to make a doctrine out of it. The concept has its flaws, I know, but it helped. And anything that can help you understand the Holy Spirit, I think, is worth looking at. And to me, that helped define the three can be one. Pulp, juice, skin. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One, but three. hope that helps someone this morning. The Holy Spirit isn't often talked about in churches, and some churches don't believe that the Holy Spirit is for today. They believe it's from the Bible, it was for the Bible times, it helped them, but we don't necessarily need it today. Um, and some people don't mention the Holy Spirit because they don't want to offend anyone. Because things that we don't understand, and we can get offended by. So some churches won't talk about the Holy Spirit in fear of offending I grew up in a uniting church in Sawtell, and Sunday morning we, they never talked about the Holy Spirit, never mentioned him. However, on the news bulletin, on Wednesday night, you could learn about the Holy Spirit, but not in church. It was just for Wednesday night. You couldn't talk in tongues in church, on, in church but Wednesday night, let it go. 
it was just funny. I lo- now I look at it as funny. Um, and as a teenager, I would go to Uniting Church Youth Group one night, and then another night during the week, I'd go to a COC, Christian Outreach Centre it was then, which is now INC, but I'd go to a COC youth group on the other night. I was just a young girl hungry for God. I didn't care where I went. If there was a youth group happening every night, I think I would have gone. But I went, I went Sunday and Friday. I think I went to church Sunday, and then Friday to a youth group, and then Tuesday night to another youth group. And when I walked into COC, I immediately knew there was something different. Immediately knew that there was something different. The place was like electric, and the people were alive. Those who've been in church a long time, you get that, hey? That the room was electric and people were alive. I came out of, I didn't come out of, I was still in the Uniting Church, but it was a different feeling, a very, very different feeling. And don't get me wrong, the Uniting Church was my foundation, and they were, there's, they were beautiful people, and they loved God passionately. And they're saved, and they love God dearly, and they love his word. But for those that weren't open to the teaching of the Holy Spirit, they were missing a key element. I got a picture of a beautiful lamp that you can put on a table. So we had a beautiful lamp over here. looks lovely, but we're not going to plug it in. We're just going to sit it there, and it looks good. And during the daytime... It looks great. Gee, I like that lamp. I should have bought one, shouldn't I? <laughs> Gee, I like that lamp. Um, but when night time comes, if you walked into the building during, and it was dark, you possibly wouldn't see the lamp and you can't use the lamp because it's not plugged in. And that was a picture I got of people's lives. Sometimes we can go through life and we're going along great. And while ever there's no trouble, everything looks great. But with the lamp... When we plug it in, if we plugged in the lamp, then it would shine bright and we could see. And I think that's like the Holy Spirit. We can walk around without the Holy Spirit, but we're fine, we're doing well, loving everyone. But then we get a bit of a knock. We go into some dark times and we don't have the Holy Spirit. So it's like we're just in darkness. And I feel like when we, when we, when we hook into the Holy Spirit, it's like we get plugged in, like that lamp. It's not, a, it's not the best analogy, but it's one I come up with that when, I was, when I was going through this. It's like, if we're not plugged into the Holy Spirit, we're missing something. We're missing the power of the Holy Spirit. We're missing that power part of God. And uh, I think that's sad to live a Christian. Imagine living a Christian life and not knowing that power you had in the Holy Spirit. We know God the Father, we know Jesus the Son, but we can miss the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, he's our guide and he's our teacher. They're key elements not to miss out on in our walk with God. John 14, 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. I find as I'm getting older, I need reminding of everything, of everything, <laughs> of what God has said. Because we can read things, and then I can go away and I can forget it. But if we've read it in the Bible, the Holy Spirit brings it, brings it back to our memory. I think that's amazing, because we don't have to remember, remember, remember everything. But the Holy Spirit, in the time that you need it, will re- remind you of the things that Jesus has said. Another thing that I was listening to, Alan... <laughs> And I totally agree with his statement a couple of weeks ago. He said, the Holy Spirit is essential to our Christian walk. The Holy Spirit is essential living the Christian life. The Holy Spirit is essential to us discovering our gifts and moving in them. We must be engaged with the Holy Spirit and we must acknowledge the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus changed our lives. The love of God is the foundation for everything. And the communion of the Holy Spirit is what will change everything. We know about grace and love. But the question I'd like to ask is, do we practice communion with the Holy Spirit? You know, we're not meant to struggle through life. We're not meant, meant to, you know, sort of just make it. <laughs> we're not meant to just make it. Uh, we have a helper, we have a comforter, and we have a guide. And the Holy Spirit lives in us. And I want to talk a little bit about um, 
being spiritual and listening to the Holy Spirit does not mean we have to be weird. Does it? We all, we've all come across those people, haven't we? Am I, am I right to say that? There's just some people, and, and there's, there's, I'm not saying they're not hearing the Holy Spirit, but we don't have to make it like, oh, you know, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit right now. I mean, we had a friend who used to, when she would speak to us, she'd stop in the middle of the sentence and say, oh, the Spirit's just talking to me about something. Hang on a minute. That's weird. We don't do that in a conversation. I don't do that in a conversation. And uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be weird. And uh, I forgot time. I just wanted to share, I wasn't sure if I was going to share the story or not, but I feel like we have time and um, it's a personal story. They're always fun. Uh, I'm, I'm a one of five children and um, I'm the youngest and my oldest brother, I was 15, he was 15 when I was born and we've never got along, never. He left home when I was two, so you know, I was just an annoying two year old. He left home, got a job and never had any real relationship with him and uh, the fact that I was a Christian made it worse because he wasn't, and that's a divide anyway. Um, and long story short, the three siblings in the middle passed away, and then it was just my older brother and me. And I was like, God, why did you leave me with him? <laughs> I got on well with the other three. Why? Why did you leave me with him? Why not my sister? Why not the other two brothers? Why am I stuck with you? <laughs> With him, that's a real Christian attitude, hey. And uh, a few years back, my mother had, as my mum was alive, and my, my mother had a fall and was in hospital. And uh, um, Stephen, my brother, lived with my mother, so it made visiting her and going to her home very difficult because he was always quite rude when you did. Um, he was not saved, so I did not expect any kind of Christian behaviour to come from him and I was not disappointed. There was no, <laughs> no grace, there was no love, there was no kindness. And uh, so I said to mum, I can't visit anymore. I'm just going to pick you up, we'll go somewhere, come back and I, don't, I just can't, I just can't be in that environment. It was too, too crushing for me. Anyway, so I didn't, for a long time I just didn't go there. Anyway, mum ended up in hospital, long story short, from hospital she went to a nursing home and so there was some decisions my brother and I had to make. And uh, you can imagine how difficult that is if we're not talking, <laughs> if he doesn't talk to me. But while mum was in hospital, um, I was speaking to my, my brother-in-law, and my brother-in-law really wanted to go and see mum in hospital, but nobody wanted to be confronted with Stephen. Does that make sense? I hope I'm, I'm explaining it well. But he's just that, he was just that kind of man, very, very difficult, didn't get along with anyone. And he was very harsh in his demeanour, very harsh in how he spoke. And we didn't want to have to go to hospital when he was there. But of course, you can't ring and go, hey, when are you visiting mum so we don't, <laughs> we don't see you? You can't do that. And I remember talking to my brother-in-law on the phone and I wanted to go and I was with my sister-in-law and she really wanted to go. And we really wanted to go in the morning and I'm like, oh, Stephen will be there in the morning for sure. And I just thought, this is ridiculous. This is 100% ridiculous. Why are we going through all this stress because he might be there? And I'm like, I'm going to pray. <laughs> Why didn't I go there first? But I'm going to pray. And the prayer I prayed was really simple. It was like, God, we're going to go and see mum tomorrow morning. I'd like you to go before us. Send the Holy Spirit before us and soften his heart if he's there. It would be really good if you could make it that he's not there. But that's completely up to you. Um, but make a way. It was really just a natural prayer. I didn't, and I, I was just, you know, God, please just make a way. Send the Spirit before us and make a way. Very natural. I didn't have to say to my sister, -in -law, I've prayed now. The Holy Spirit's going. It'll be good. I didn't have to do anything like that. I just a, a natural prayer. And uh, that morning, <laughs> there was quite a few of us. There was myself. There was Paul. There was Kathy. There was probably about seven of us walking in. And as we've come in to go into the hospital room, Paul was first and he saw Stephen in the room and he said, the first thing I thought was, I've got to get Megan out of here. 
because you know, you're emotional, your mum's in hospital, she's not doing well, um, and they're faced with that, and he wanted to protect me, and he did a simple prayer. Now, I didn't know he prayed, but he obviously prayed the Holy Spirit for wisdom. And what he did is he walked into, the, he walked into that room and he just held out his hand and said, hey, Steve, how you going? Now, few things could have happened there, but what Stephen did was shook his hand and said, all right. And then mum was going to be, um, have a, they were going to give her a wash. So we all had to go, we all had to go <laughs> and sit in the waiting room. And so we're all in there with Stephen and uh, we just talked. The Holy Spirit went before us, softened that man's heart, and we all sat there and talked. I hadn't talked to him for a long time. The Holy Spirit is good. God is good. And if we can just do those prayers of just um, in confidence that God will go before us. And to, to, to do the whole turnaround of that story, um, I was visiting mum. I'd come, come from casino to coughs every couple of weeks to visit mum in hospital. She was there for quite a while before the nursing home. And... Um, Stephen and I had to work out, like, we never thought mum would go into a nursing home. That wasn't even, we'd never talked about it. But she wasn't, you know, dementia was getting worse and she'd had a bed sore, she couldn't walk, and there was a whole he list of reasons why that had to happen. And uh, so Stephen and I had to talk about quite a bit. And <laughs> I was sitting on the end of mum's bed and he was there, and thankfully my sister in law was there because no one would have believed this happened. And the words out of his mouth, which I can't say in church the whole sentence, but you'll get what I mean. He said, I know I've been a... Mm -mm. Can we turn the page? That was my sorry. <laughs> of 50 years, that was it. That was the moment. How exciting. And all I said was... And, like, there's been a lot of, like, hurt, a lot of, like, a lot. And I could have just gone, what? No. No, I want to sit down and, and process and unpack and tell you all the things you've done to me, all the hurt you've caused. No, it's not going to be that simple. I didn't. I just said, Stephen, of course. And you know what? <laughs> um, this is a bit that's going to undo me. Uh, now when I go to Coffs Harbour, I go to visit him. <laughs> Remember mum lived there, I couldn't go to the house. He, he bought mum's house. Now when I go to Coffs, I always visit him. And he gives me the biggest bear hugs. I'd never had a hug from him my whole life. Like I'm, I'm 54 now, and probably, probably say 50. I get, well, maybe 52. Got the first hug from my brother. And it wasn't just a... He hugged me. And I could feel that that was the sorry as well. It was, I know after all these years that you're not the person I thought you were. You know, I was fighting for him to keep the house, fighting for him to stay there. Um, and I guess all that to say, God is good. And if we listen and pray to the Holy Spirit and ask him to go before us, he's our guide, he's our teacher, and he's our comforter. I have the best relationship probably now with Stephen than I had with the other three siblings. Isn't that amazing? And I really wish mum saw it. I did say to her, oh, Stephen and I talk now, and this, this was her comment, about time. <laughs> about time. She was a praying woman. She was a praying woman, my mum. And um, my children have seen that because they had seen how Stephen had treated us as a family and, and me particularly. And they're like, mum, who is he now? Who is he? And I'll come back, you know, Stephen might come for a visit. He might come and stay with us. And they're like, what? He'd come and stay here. I'm like, well, yeah. And, we, and we're excited about that. And back to my comment of why, God, would you leave me with him? If I had any of the other three siblings, that relationship with Stephen would never have come about. Never. Well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know what God would have done. But from what I know um, in the natural, that would never have happened. And my prayer for him one day, he, he abused me a few years ago on my birthday, like really badly over a misunderstanding about mum and, and getting a power of attorney and things like that. And he, he really upset, upset me. And what I did is I sat down, I wrote a prayer for him. I said, God, he's misunderstood. And I can see that he's misunderstood. But I ask you to soften his heart and call him to salvation through your Holy Spirit. And that's all I prayed. I wrote it in, I think I've still got it in here from eight years ago. 
soften his heart and call him to salvation. And you know what? His heart is soft. And I never thought I'd see it. I never thought it was possible. You know, a bit like what, what Jackie was saying about what we believe in our confession. I believe God can soften people's heart, but not Stephen's. <laughs> like my, my, yeah, my belief and my confession, like, oh, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't think God could do that. He was a hard man. And uh, to see God soften him, his heart, and then what's the next thing that's going to happen? Salvation. And when I packed up mum's nursing home room when, after she passed away, Stephen was at golf and he said, oh, I was really panicking about how I was going to get that done. I just didn't know what I was going to do. And we had it all done before he got home from golf. He didn't even know. I just like, we got to get this sorted. And he, the words out of his mouth, which I didn't even think he knew words like this, was, I feel really blessed that you did that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I could, could have should have said back to him. Um, don't underestimate what God's doing in your world. Like to my world, that looked horrendous. Three siblings die and I'm stuck with you. And uh, God loves him. God loves him. And maybe, you know, I don't know, I don't want to speculate too much, but um, the relationship that we have now, I can see him coming to salvation. And maybe the next time I'm invited, <laughs> that could be my testimony. How exciting would that be? So all that to say, the Holy Spirit is such a natural part of a Christian walk when we're plugged in. When we're plugged in. We don't have to walk around in darkness. We don't have to stumble around not knowing where we are and what we're doing. Plug into the Holy Spirit. Ask him for wisdom. Ask him for guidance. Ask him for comfort if you need it. And uh, listen. <laughs> listen to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we need to take, like with communion, that was beautiful communion this morning, where we've got to take that time to listen. Because the busyness of our day, the busyness of our life, if we don't stop, I mean, church is the perfect time to stop and listen. But we can do that more regularly at home. We can do that in our quiet time. We need to stop and we need to listen. So in closing, I'd like to encourage you today, don't be an unplugged lamp. <laughs> There you go. If you leave here this morning, that's what I want you to remember. Don't be an unplugged lamp. Plug into the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge him. Engage with him. Cultivate a relationship with him. How? By praying, reading the word, get involved with other believers. Um, there's lots of books on the Holy Spirit. The Bible's full of knowledge on the Holy Spirit. Um, books, talk with people you know who have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And ask questions. If you're unsure of anything, ask questions. Jackie, Alan, if they don't know, they'll find out. Um, but yeah, the Holy Spirit, it's the, it's the power part of our walk with Christ. Earlier I said this comment, the church isn't here to nurse our wounds. We come in wounded, we come in broken, but God meets us. There's a season of healing and there's a time to move. When I spoke that earlier, I really felt that somebody, if not one, maybe others, that really spoke to you, that, that statement. And I felt like God said, if that was you, if that, if that meant something to you when I said that, we don't, the church isn't here to nurse our wounds. And I don't mean that offensively, I just mean we, of course we come in broken, but we're not meant to stay broken, we're not meant to stay wounded, we're meant to get healing, we're meant to get, you know, um, what we need. We're, we're, we're in the place of God. God has all we could possibly need. And then we're to be healed and go out and find others that need that. We're not to stay in our wounds and to stay in our hurt. And I believe if that meant something to you this morning, that God has said it's time. I've had you nestled away, but your wounds are healed. And it's now safe. It's now safe for you to come out. The Holy Spirit is with you and he will guide you. So if that's for you this morning, that's, that's God speaking directly to you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking directly to you. It's time now. Your wounds are healed and it's safe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you um, for each person that's here this morning, God, and each family that's represented. And I pray, Lord, that, you, that they, what you've dropped into each and everyone's spirit, Father God, that they can go away and they can... Um, live out of that, the new revelation that you've given them, Father. 
I thank you for this church and what it's doing in this community. I thank you for the meeting they're having tonight, Father God, and I pray that, that it will be full, Father God, of people hungry for your word, hungry for, you, for unity, and hungry to see what God will do, what the Holy Spirit will do, how the Holy Spirit will move. Bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't leave here the way you came. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you, Megan. The funny thing about a lamp or a light of any kind, right? Lamp, LED, whatever they are, is once they're on, darkness flees. Darkness can't be in the presence of light. And so I guess if you're in this place this morning and you find yourself stuck or in a spot, when you plug the lamp in, darkness must flee. And I love the fact that um, your testimony shared started with a prayer, just a simple prayer. And we don't need to use fluffy, eloquent, weird words, amen? We just need a simple prayer. And I think a lot of times in Christian community, the Holy Spirit is... Um, communicated in such a way where it's a bit mystical. And I just want to say that the Holy Spirit's role, he's very specific, he has a mission, and his mission is, is simple, to draw us back to the Father. That's why he was left, that's why Jesus came, was to reconcile us to the Father. And so if you are here this morning, if you are here this morning, and you are separated in any way from the Father, let me just encourage you, don't leave this place the same. Don't walk out of that door in the same place. His mission is always and will always be to restore and reconnect you to the Father. Amen? So if somebody bought you today or you're here on your own, I, I commend you wholeheartedly for walking in on your own. But don't leave this place the same. Come and see somebody. Come and see us. Come and see Megan. Anyone, grab someone and just say, oh, I want to know him. I need to know him. Amen. God is good. Always, always good. Father, bless this, this people. Bless this community, God. Lord, would you continue, Holy Spirit, to take us on the journey of reconnecting with our Father, learning more about him, loving him more. And God, for any person here in this place today who does not know you, I pray, Holy Spirit, would you continue to draw that beautiful heart to the Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So you know us girls, um, but welcome, welcome this morning. I only have a couple of announcements. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, team. You know, some of the team 